okay. I don't know what the hell just happened. It said, hold the steering wheel, and I did. And when I'm holding the steering wheel, it keeps beeping, but I'm holding it with both hands, giving it a little jiggle, and it just kicked me out and said, uh, auto steer unavailable for rest of drive. So that sucks because I still have three and a half hours left. Yeah, I wonder what the hell happened because I wasn't doing anything crazy. I wonder if it uh, just didn't like how I was holding it or something. I'm curious if you guys have a Model S or X with autopilot. What I understood, you just kind of grab it, jiggle it a little bit, but maybe it didn't like that. And so now it won't let me do it. Uh Auto steer unavailable for the rest of this drive. Hold steering warning was ignored. See, so that's not true. Ah, uh, bummer. I have to actually drive the car. How can you do this? Well, shit, I guess there's that. <laughs> well, how's it going? Oh, not good. I need your help. It tells me I, I can't use auto steer the rest of my drive. No, no, so you can hold it, but it won't, sometimes it won't register. It just needs to sense a little bit of weight in like one or two degree movement, either to the left or to the right. So if you rest your hand on it the whole time and the steering wheel kind of does its left and right motions, your weight of your hand typically will do enough to, to you know, not have it annoy you. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, thank cool. you so much. Yeah, I'll call you if I have any other freak out moments. All right, so I stopped here in Yermo, Yermo again and Eddie World, thank you for another lovely time. Probably the most enjoyable urinal I've ever been to. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but now time to head back. This thing charges really fast. I think I need to dig in more to that. So I'm gonna try to do that soon. And as you heard, uh, my friends from Like Tesla helped out. Now that I've stopped, I should be able to get my auto steer back, which means I don't have to, I can use autopilot essentially. So we'll test that out as soon as we get back in the car. Man, this place is nice though. You should come visit. All right, uh, getting ready. Going to now try to re-engage autopilot after it telling me I was bad. And thanks to my friends at like Tesla to try to help me figure out how to uh, how to work with it. Because if you recall, I was holding the steering wheel and it still kept beeping and I just couldn't figure out how to like let it know. So apparently there's a little torque motor in there and so you have to give it a little jiggle there, but it, it's kind of uh, kind of finicky and, and it, yeah, it told me I was bad and it wouldn't let me do it anymore. So here we go. Looks like it'll work. Tap, tap. Boom, so please keep your hands on the wheel. So apparently here's the deal. You're supposed to just keep your hand resting on it. And as long as you do that, kind of the weight of your hand against the steering that it does will uh, will auto uh, let it know that you're, so you never have to really worry about it. But if you take your hands off, like if you put them up on the side or rest them on your lap or whatever, then, um, then it's a problem. And, and then you have to grab it and kind of figure out what it wants you to do. Not very intuitive, a problem I think a lot of folks are going to struggle with. As you can see, you know, a Tesla owner is struggling with it myself. So, and there goes the GoPro. Next stop, Santa Monica. Okay guys, so I'm taking a back way around Los Angeles because it is 4 p.m. on a weekday, which means traffic is absolutely disgusting. And we're gonna try autopilot on city streets, not on the freeway. Let's do it. Oh, auto steer temporarily unavailable. Here it comes. So it automatically picked up the the speed limit there because you can see it in the top right, but the people in front of me aren't going super fast, so that's kind of where we're at right now. This is a really good road, just to be clear. That's one of the things about this that works well is, especially on this route, it's the road itself is high quality, the lane markings are good, so you really don't have a problem. You don't have the bob stocks or whatever they're called, the little bump versions, which you see in Las Vegas. Definitely the trick, one of the tricks is to keep your hand on the wheel because you don't really have to steer, but just the weight of your hand makes it aware that you are holding the wheel, in fact. And so that's a big deal. All right, let's see how long this lasts. Okay, so I just lost, well, the GoPro again. I just lost autopilot because this road got kind of bumpy and it was almost immediate. And what it did is it tried to actually throw me into the other lane. You're going the wrong way! And I just had to like jerk it back and make sure that I didn't actually go into oncoming traffic. It, it, it I probably making it sound a bit more dramatic, but it certainly felt that way. Good thing I did have my hand on the wheel, which I'm now realizing is kind of a critical thing. 
you can kind of hear the bumps there. Yeah, this road just got a lot more bumpy and uh, more difficult, I suppose. So it wasn't that the lane lines were gone, it's that there was a bump in it and the bump kind of pushed the car one way and it looked like it tried to correct for it, in which case it would have, it was going into the other lane. It may have corrected itself and put me back in the correct lane, but I wasn't gonna test that, right? I'm not gonna, the engineers can do that on, on a test track. This this was real life, so yeah. Uh, and I just had to jerk, you know, kind of jerk the wheel back, take control, and it disengaged. Uh, yeah, there you go, first, first autopilot fail. All right, second one, second time autopilot failed on me. But again, it's about the quality of the road. I'm gonna show you the road here, it's kind of bumpy, but it's it'd be fine like you can see the the logo and icon are fine right now but as soon as this thing gets a, the traction gets a little a little off it just fails completely so yeah you need to be really paying attention and also on a road like this the adaptive cruise control is fine it's a one lane road that just goes straight for uh, 40 miles but these little bumps here will just totally throw the autopilot off so yeah this is why i feel you know these things are much further out is because in a perfect perfect world scenario yeah autopilot self-driving it's here as soon as things get a little bit dicey you lose it so we're just going to do adaptive cruise control here for the remainder got about an hour 40 until i'm back in santa monica stay tuned okay guys um as we have kind of good lighting here now i want to just show you one feature that i discovered i thought it was a bug but it turned to be a feature which happens and it's uh the lane assist so i know a lot of other cars have this what you see here is as i kind of drift into the the edge of the lane the steering wheel will vibrate there's no auditory stuff or i've not pushed it far enough to do it but here you go Let, let's see if we can push it so you can see the lane there and, and, and if i just kind of let it go to the side I don't know if you can see that, it's so subtle. I'll just let it go to the side. So my hand is on there, and as we go, you can see it just vibrates, it just vibrates my hand off. Hard to tell, we're gonna try to get better shots of that before, but it does have automatic lane assist, or the, uh, I forget what the feature's called, but basically a, a warning when you're going into a different lane. Obviously with autopilot, it will stay in the lane for you, but as I have mentioned before, in a scenario like this, you don't really want that to be, you, you, the, the road conditions aren't, aren't ideal, sorry. Uh, so in, in a scenario where the road conditions are questionable, this still helps you a little bit, and that's kind of the cool thing, and didn't know that. That's why we do this. All right, guys, we're doing it. This is the thing that everyone raves about, autopilot and stop and go traffic. We're better to test that in Los Angeles. Surprised at how well it does. I think the, uh, the detection of cars stopped far ahead of us is really helpful. Earlier I was driving and it detected basically somebody had stopped, beeped, let me know, and uh, I couldn't even tell because the car in front of me hadn't stopped yet. Uh, I don't know how it did that. Yeah, this is, uh, this is working surprisingly well. Oh, hold the steering wheel, there it is. So I have to kind of jiggle it a little bit. It's sensitive, I, I don't know what the trick is there. I gotta figure that out, but yeah, more to come.